everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to this big unveiling of a project that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks and months. We've partnered up with a company in the UK called Southbank Investment Research who have commissioned 200 plus of these one ounce silver button rounds with a Howling Wolf and Ad Lunam design. Of course, Ad Lunam means to the moon. Now, Southbank Investment Research have commissioned these to be part of a publication which they have created all about investing in silver. Some of the reasons why they think it is a good buy. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm not retailing these. So if you guys are watching this video, seeing them being created from beginning to end and you like them and you are interested in them, I do not real retail them at all. There's a link in the description below to South Bank Investment Research's website where you can find out all about the report and the first 200 people that buy that report will get one of these rounds. So that is the general premise of these rounds. And I'm really happy with the way they've turned out. In today's video, we are going to be doing an end-to-end -end, uh, process of how we made them. So you'll be able to see the pouring, stamping. The stamping was an absolute fun joy for my next door neighbours. Let me tell you, over 4,800 stamps on all of these. And the antiquing and polishing process, which yielded a rather nasty blister, which sadly popped the other day. So all in all, we've put a lot of hard work into these rounds. And I hope that, uh, you know, that shows because I do think that they are very attractive looking. They're very cool designs. I have to commend South Bank Investment Research for the design of the stamp. Uh, I think it's really good. We did the prototype 000 here and then we've made 202 of them. So I just want to say uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's quite a cool end-to-end -end process. Uh, otherwise, check out South Bank Investment Researchers link down in the description below and if you guys have got any feedback or comments then let me know down in that comment section otherwise enjoy the making of process and we'll see you at the other end of the video okay so we are now over at the silver pouring bench and i'm doing this as a voiceover from a pre-recorded session of video so i'm not pouring and talking live now these one ounce rounds are a little bit different to regular bars and because of how many we are going to make it made sense to have a four part mold made up instead of just using one single mold and you'd have to then tip it out after every single one it's a lot less efficient now the method by which i use to pour my silver is by eye and as such we do not always get exactly one ounce in each cavity of this mold it's a choice you make as a pourer to put quality over the quantity that you produce. And for me, I want to make sure that each individual round has really nice pretty ripples and has really nice look and feel to it as well. So yes, I could just put exactly 31.105 grams worth of silver in the crucible and dump it all out into each cavity. But for me, it won't yield the right result. It won't have these nice pretty ripples. It'll often have a lot of graphite on it. So you can see here, we've got all four cavities, good load of silver in the graphite crucible, enough that it stays molten for a while, little spin of the mold there round, and then into the remaining two cavities. Now, after pouring so many of these, you get quite good. You get a lot of hand-eye coordination kind of skills going about how much silver needs to be dumped into each cavity and get it looking as good as it can. So it is a little bit of a learned skill, there's a bit of trial and error, and when I do these and other types of projects like this, you often have this period at the start where you're really inefficient, but then later on you get a lot more efficient as you go on, which is really interesting. Now, one of the tips that I would always give any silver pourers out there, if you're aiming for a specific weight of an item, uh, weigh it when it's hot, and if it's not right, you can see here we've got a couple which are just about perfect. But if it's not right, like the one, the first one there, it was just under an ounce, pop it back in the furnace when it's still hot. It takes a lot less time to melt. This one, 32 grams, that's in my threshold uh, of acceptability because we are, as I said, doing this all by eye. So rather than pouring each one out again and again and again to get 31.105, we let some go through which are a little bit heavier. This one, the last one, 34 grams. That's a little bit too heavy for me, a little bit too much free silver to be giving away with each individual round. And also I think it doesn't look as good. If you get a customer that weighs their round and it says it's you know 1.2 ounces when it's billed as one ounce, then that's in my opinion not as good as getting it as close as possible. So you can see there I got two out of four. There were some times when I'd get four out of four, there were some times I got none out of four. It's a process that you go through and once you've made them, once you've poured them, uh, into the quenching pot they go 
and uh, they are done in terms of the pouring side of things. So that's the process by which I go through. I would say to create 200 of them, I've probably poured close to 500 little individual rounds. Uh, and some people might say that's a colossal waste of time and energy, but look at the results. You get really pretty looking rounds, which are ultimately in that perf perfect little weight range of one ounce which is exactly what we want. We then want them to look as good as they can and be as nice as they can. Okay, the next stage is the stamping process, which is one of the hardest parts of the process. You might think the pouring of the silver is hard, but stamping is a learned skill. And I have definitely learned and adapted my stamping technique over this last couple of years doing what I do. So here are the blanks. Uh, they are just all ready to go. There's no cleaning required. The silver is as clean and lovely as possible. And we are here now just to put this big stamp on first. I would highly recommend any fledgling silver stampers out there to get themselves a big heavy anvil or at least something that's got a lot of heft and weight to it. This is a steel one and all of the energy that you put through the stamp goes straight onto the silver and it's absorbed a lot by that sort of heavy, dense weight underneath it. This stamp, by the way, Emshaw Engraving has made it. They are a very, very good stamp maker. And it's a very flat bottomed one, which is why we need a big, heavy mallet and a big, heavy anvil to absorb the blow. The wolf is gonna be left sticking out from the silver and the rest is gonna be pushed down around it. So it is required to have this kind of big sledgehammer looking uh, mini mallet, so to speak. It's a nice heavy one. You can use other hammers for smaller stamps where you might need a little bit more control because this big old hammer is quite unwieldy, but it does yield a lot more force through the stamp into the silver, which is, of course, really, really important for getting good purchase on the stamp and getting a good level of detail and depth on that stamp. So we're gonna do them one at a time here on these blanks, otherwise they'll go flying across the room as I stamp them all on the anvil. Uh, very important to remember, ear protection. There's a loud bang that's gonna come when I do this stamp and it's very important to protect one's ears. So just two swift strikes there. Again, it's with experience. I'd recommend just doing one strike at a time usually, but for me, I can tell when things are okay to strike two times in a row quickly. You can see the nice depth that's gone in there. So I'm just gonna fast forward the video part now and we'll go through all of these. Uh, my next door neighbors probably really hate me from all of these stampings, but in truth, they're actually really good. They're, they're very, very understanding that every now and again, I make a lot of noise. So there we have all of the nine little, or I should say 10 little wolf rounds with their wolf heads on them. The next stage is doing the text. Now I've got here this handy homemade little uh, alphabet and number holding system, otherwise it's gonna be a nightmare to find the right letters. Uh, now on this particular occasion, we are able to just stamp all of them kind of at once. It's the best, most efficient way that I've found of stamping them. And bear in mind, we've got nearly 200, well over 200 of these little rounds to make with add lunam and NO000 written on each one. So there's a lot of chops to do. And if you're doing each one individually, taking the stamp back and forth and so on, it's just gonna take ages. Now you'll see that I'm starting kind of in the middle and then working my way out round each side. That's so that we can get the best looking uh, centralization of the text with the wolf head. Uh, sometimes it can go, uh, you know, if you don't quite get it spaced out right, you start in a certain place, it'll look wrong. And we wanna minimize quite how many we mess up on that sort of stamping. So you can see it is a lengthy old process of getting all of these on. Uh, it is sped up by doing these sort of 10 at a time on the anvil like this, but it really does take a long time. This is all sped up sort of eight times uh, speed. So I think all told, it took me a better part of two full days to do all of this stamping. Of course, you need breaks halfway through uh, or after each sort of set because it's, hard work, concentrating work, you have to hunch over the anvil to make sure everything's in the right place. So it really is quite challenging to do, but they are transformed from just blanks in all of a sudden to this wonderful looking finish with these texts on there. But it doesn't finish there because we've also got some stamping to do on the other side. Now for these ones, I have already stamped one OZT on the back. It's pretty similar to the, uh, the wolf stamp, just heavy old hammer hit with uh, the 1OZT stamp that we've got. But now it's writing South Bank on the back. And again, you know, this is a little bit more challenging and you'll notice that I've put a 
black rubber block underneath it and that's to protect and preserve the patterns and ripples and stamps on the other side. If I was to stamp them upside down like this onto the hard steel it would just completely warp and damage and flatten out any details that we've got there which is not good. So this hard rubber block does that really well. Uh, but because they're kind of a rounded surface it can be very difficult to get the right purchase on them especially when it's at uh, the edge of the round you can see some of them sort of you know, leaning over to one side when we're getting those stamped. So you can see it is a little bit of a labour of love there's a lot of time energy and effort that goes into each and every single one of these rounds but we do it so that we can try and make them look as good as possible uh, it's just the way that we work and I wouldn't have it any other way to be honest although having done 4,800 plus individual stamps on these whole collection of 200 plus rounds it certainly did take its toll but here they are at least these ones anyway the last step in the process is to take them up to the Edinburgh office and get them assayed once they have been assayed and returned to me I then antique them now this is a little quick chemical process that we use to blacken the letters so you can see here this is as they were before we sent them up to Edinburgh and those little marks just under South Bank are those assay marks but you can't really necessarily see the letters that well it doesn't kind of leap out from the silver but there's a little process that we can do to actually make that happen to make those letters black and stand out and it's using this liver of sulfur gel it's called patinering and it does basically just tone the silver, it antiques the silver. Silver will naturally tone and blacken over time and this process here just speeds that up quite a long way. Very, very pure silver like 909 silver will take a very long time to sort of tone over time. So this process really speeds it up almost instantaneously. So just a bit of hot water with that liver of sulfur gel in there and then you pop the silver in and it really is just a case of leaving it in there for maybe 30 seconds until you can see right there it's already coloured up quite nicely and then once you've kind of got the level of patina that you want so you don't want it too deep because it will be very difficult to actually get rid of all of the rest of that colour you can actually just then put it in some other water clean them off stop the reaction and then they are all ready to be polished back up to their silvery goodness so that's the process now you can see here we've got all of them done in this little tub and the gorgeous colours I mean part of me really wants to just leave them as they are because some of the rainbow colours that you see in these uh, patinaed pieces is really amazing but a little bit of silver polish will get them looking nice and silvery again and that's ultimately what we want we want the effect of silver but we also want to have those nice blackened letters so the silver polish is really just as simple as getting some on the, uh, the yellow duster and this little foam applicator here and then giving it a good old rub with the silver polish and it will just take off that darkened layer on the surface very quickly and easily and immediately you can see the stark difference there back up to its shiny goodness and the letters the numbers and the detail of all of the other stamps are preserved in black so you can see them and actually they leap off the silver which is really really good and I'm very impressed with the way that this process actually finishes the pieces it really looks really good in my opinion so the rest of the process for me was just going through all 200 and polishing them up much to the dismay of my fingers lots of little blisters appeared but that's part of the process so that's the entire end-to-end -end process I am very proud of the amount of work that I put into these sometimes it can be quite the labor of love you know it's it's a lot of work here and the stamping you know, it takes a toll on your hands I've got recovering blisters on the bottom of my finger there and blisters at the top from the polishing I'm not saying that to complain or moan I'm saying that because I put in you know my heart and soul into the work that I do and I want to make sure that the products that we create are as good as they can be and look as good as they can be and I hope that that's what we've achieved with these one ounce rounds. So if you've enjoyed this making of video, you know what to do, hit that thumbs up button and share this around on your social media. And if you're not subscribed to our channel and you like our content and want to see more of it in the future, then you need to hit that subscribe button and notifications on if you so wish. Otherwise, as I said at the start of the video, all the information on how to get hold of these rounds is in the description below. So head on over to South Bank Investment Research's website where you can see all about their report. And as I said, the first 200 people that purchase that report will get one of these rounds. It's the only way that you can get hold of them. 
So otherwise, last big thank you again to South Bank Investment Research for the opportunity to work with you guys on this. And I hope we can bring more products like this or different ones perhaps in the future as well. Otherwise, thank you one and all for watching. Have a fantastic week ahead. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.